हेलो टू ऑल योर स्टूडेंट्स आवर टूडे टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज नॉन लीनियर फॉर्मोको काइनेटिक्स सपोज वी प्लॉट ऑफ ग्राफ टेकिंग रेट ऑफ एलिमिनेशन ऑन वाई एक्सेस एंड कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ एक्स एक्सेस सो वॉट काइंड ऑफ कर्व डू यू एक्सपेक्ट यस इनिशियली वेन यू इंक्रीज द डोज ऑफ द ड्रग और वेन यू इंक्रीज इन द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ द ड्रग द रेट ऑफ एलिमिनेशन ऑल्सो इंक्रीजेस बट आफ्टर सम टाइम्स विद इंक्रीज इन द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन द रेट ऑफ एलिमिनेशन डज नॉट इंक्रीजेस ओके सो इनिशियली initially when the concentration of the drug was less at that time the drugs follows first order kinetics and as you go on increase the concentration of the drug as the enzymes get saturated at that time the drug starts following zero order kinetics but somewhere in between first order and zero order kinetics we have got a third order of kinetics known as the mixed order kinetics yes what happens in mixed order kinetics mixed order kinetics have got features of both first order kinetics and zero order kinetics like we know in case of first order kinetics as we increase the concentration of the drug the rate of elimination increases in a linear fashion this thing we know at higher concentration of the drug as you increase the concentration the rate of elimination does not increases this is zero order kinetics this also we know but what happens in mixed order kinetics here over here as you increase the concentration of the drug the rate of elimination may increase or it may not increase means we cannot predict the result exactly so that happens in mixed order kinetics it is also known as non linear kinetics now we'll try to know little bit more about linear pharmacokinetics linear pharmacokinetics means the system which follows the principle of superposition is known as linear pharmacokinetic system now we can prove it with the help of a semi logarithmic graph taking time on x axis and log of c on y axis at different doses we'll get different curves like this now at a time of 1 hour when we check the plasma concentration of drug we got it 1 micro m 10 micro m and 100 micro m so you can see with increase in the dose the plasma concentration also increases like if you are increasing the dose 10 times the plasma concentration of the drug is also increasing 10 times okay with every 10% increase in the dose the plasma concentration is also increasing by 10% that is known as linear pharmacokinetics and when we try to normalize it by a single dose so we got that all these three lines are superimposing over one another so this is known as linear pharmacokinetics with 1% increase in the dose the various pharmacokinetic parameters are also increasing by 1% so this is linear pharmacokinetics and the example what i have given is for intravenous bolus similar thing you can observe when the drug is taken via oral route okay with every uh, 1% rise in the dose there will be increase in the 1% absorption or the various other pharmacokinetic parameters and all these lines are superimposable over one another so this is what happens in linear pharmacokinetics so similarly if we we'll, we can compare this thing with a non linear pharmacokinetics so what happens over here the system which does not follow the principle of superposition is known as non linear pharmacokinetic system similar kind of example we'll check out over here with the help of an intravenous bolus various doses of drug we got various curves and when we normalize it for a single dose we saw that these curves are not superimposing over one another so when these curves are not superimposing over one another we call them as a non linear pharmacokinetic similar thing you can check out for the orally administered drug also now when i'm saying repeatedly law of superposition law of superposition means this law of superposition it mainly depends upon two important laws they are law of additivity and law of homogeneity so we'll check out these two laws one by one first of all law of additives suppose this is one particular kind of system and here the input is x1 and output we got is y1 okay now same system system we should always keep constant same system and now the input is x2 and we got the output y2 
Now suppose these two output, we add these two outputs, we got y1 plus y2. Okay. Now same system. And now we are adding the input and giving it to the system. Okay. Now x1 plus x2 combinedly we are giving to this system and the output we got is y, y. Suppose in case we have got two kind of probabilities. The first probability is y, y may be equal to y1 plus y2. If this happens, that means this system is a linear pharmacokinetic system. But if y, y is not equal to y1 plus y2, that means this system is a non-linear pharmacokinetic system. What I am saying repeatedly. As the input, so should be the output. If you are increasing the input, the output should also increase. If you are increasing the dose, the various pharmacokinetic parameters that is absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination, everything should also be increased in a linear fashion. If it is happening so, that means that particular system is a linear pharmacokinetic system. And this one was the law of additives. Second, we'll check out the law of homogeneity. Suppose this is a same kind of system and here now the expo, uh, input is x and output is y. Suppose to this output we are multiplying it with a constant k and we got k y. Okay. Now to this system, to this input we are multiplying it with the same kind of constant k and we are getting k x and this constant with this constant we, along with the input we are giving it to the system and suppose we got the output k y dash now suppose k y is equals to k y dash that means it is a linear pharmacokinetic system and if k y is not equal to k y dash that means it is a non-linear pharmacokinetic system okay so i hope you people have understood what happens in non-linear pharmacokinetics in non-linear pharmacokinetics suppose we are increasing a dose by 10 percent then the absorption it may increase or it may not increase. If it is increasing, it may increase too much. It may increase by 50%. With 10% increase in the dose, the absorption may increase by 50%. Or with 10% increase in the dose, the absorption may decrease by 30%. Anything can happen, but whatever is happening, it should happen with a non-linear fashion. So that is known as a non-linear pharmacokinetic system. Now, we'll check out few differences between linear and non-linear pharmacokinetics. This is for linear pharmacokinetics and this one is for non-linear pharmacokinetics. Pharmacokinetic parameter for a drug would not change with change in dose. But in non-linear pharmacokinetic, the pharmacokinetic parameters for a drug can change with the change in dose. Okay, when you are changing the dose, the absorption, metabolism, distribution, elimination, everything may be changing in an erratic manner. Next, linear pharmacokinetic is dose independent because whatever is happening, it is independent of dose. But here in non-linear pharmacokinetic, it is dose dependent. With changes in the dose, various pharmacokinetic parameters are changing. Next, linear pharmacokinetics are also known as the first order kinetics. Whereas non-linear pharmacokinetics are also called as mixed order kinetics because here it is a mixture of first and zero order kinetics. It is also known as saturated kinetics because over here the enzymes, the uh, transporters, the plasma proteins, everything will be saturated. It is also known as capacity limited kinetics. All the semi-log plots of concentration versus time for different doses are superimposable. Whereas for non-linear pharmacokinetics, it is not superimposable. So these are various differences between linear and non-linear pharmacokinetics. Next, we'll check out various factors causing non-linearity. And the factors are the pharmacokinetic factors only. That is drug absorption, drug distribution, drug metabolism and drug excretion. Now we'll check out these one by one. First of all, drug absorption. Various means 
generally non linearity within drug absorption arises from three important factors and they are number 1 when absorption is solubility or dissolution of drug is rate limited at high concentration in intestine saturated solution of drug is formed second one when absorption includes carrier mediated transport system the saturation of the transport system occurs thirdly pre systemic gut wall or hepatic metabolism attains saturation now we'll check out these things one by one first of all when drug absorption is solubility or dissolution of drug is rate limiting okay now we'll plot a graph on the x axis is time and for y axis there is plasma concentration for griseofulvin okay griseofulvin is an antifungal drug and it is very uh, uh, lipophilic drug as such means um, it is very fatty drug you can say now such kind of curve we got when two tablets of griseofulvin was taken and such kind of uh, curve we got when four tablets of griseofulvin was taken so you can see when two tablets were taken the plasma concentration was more and when four tablets were taken the plasma concentration of griseofulvin reduces so griseofulvin is poorly water soluble as such because okay lipophilicity we require but lipophilicity will occur first of all the drug should get dissolved in our body fluid first of all disintegration and dissolution should occur and after that absorption takes place but for this dissolution the drug should have water solubility also but in case of griseofulvin it is poorly water soluble drug less proportion of drug is being dissolved and absorbed with higher doses so here bioavailability decreases as the dose increases anyways tmax remains the same so this is the first problem next factor in in case of drug absorption was when absorption includes carrier mediated transport system the saturation of the transport system takes place now again we'll plot a graph a, a very good example of this is amoxicillin uh, we'll make a graph we'll plot a graph taking time on x axis and plasma amoxicillin concentration on y axis now we'll get a curve like this at 375 mg the plasma concentration was high now at 750 mg when you are increasing the dose the plasma concentration is decreasing next we are increasing the dose now 1500 mg the plasma concentration still reduced next at 3000 mg the plasma concentration of the drug still reduced so this amoxicillin is actively transported by peptide transporter in the small intestine the active transporter becomes saturated as the dose increases so bioavailability decreases as the dose increases and anyways the tmax remains constant okay so here you can see the carrier protein the transporter protein will get saturated as you are increasing the dose of the drug okay so it means it is following a non linearity with increasing the dose of the drug the absorption or the plasma concentration of the drug is reducing so it is an example of non linearity now the third factor coming in the uh, drug absorption is pre systemic gut wall or hepatic metabolism attains saturation so suppose this is your gi tract this is your liver and suppose this is your uh, your blood circulation now suppose initially you consume five molecules of drug among these five molecules entire five molecules went to the liver obviously because of the hepatic portal venous system because of the first pass metabolism all the uh, drugs first it will move to the liver and then from the liver it will get distributed to various uh, uh, means first of all to your uh, systemic circulation okay now in this case we have consumed five molecules of drug and among these all the five molecules move to the liver first and then from the liver three molecules went to the systemic circulation and two molecules undergone metabolism so now remember when you are consuming five molecules of drug 40% of the drug is getting metabolism in the liver and just uh, 60% is uh, uh, available for distribution now suppose you are consumed 10 molecules of the drug and among this 10 molecules 40% should get metabolized in the liver but what is happening over here just 20% is remaining in the liver for metabolism and 80% have been moved to the systemic circulation so this means that at one particular point the liver the hepatic first pass metabolism will undergo saturation and once it has undergone saturation it will not uh you no know, metabolize still more amount of the drug like in initial case what we did 
फाइव मॉलिकल्स ऑफ द ड्रग वॉज बिन टेकन एंड अमॉन्ग दोज फाइव मॉलिकल्स फोर्टी परसेंट दैट इज टू मॉलिकल्स अंडर गॉन मेटाबॉलिज्म बट वेन यू आर इंक्रीजिंग द डोज बाई टेन एम जी वॉट वी वर एक्सपेक्टिंग वेन यू आर इंक्रीजिंग द डोज द हिपैटिक मेटाबॉलिज्म शुड ऑल्सो इंक्रीज विद द डोज ओके लाइक प्रीवियसली फॉर फाइव मॉलिकल्स टू मॉलिकल्स वर अंडर गोइंग मेटाबॉलिज्म इन लीवर नाउ वेन यू आर गिविंग टेन मॉलिकल्स ऑफ ड्रग देन फोर मॉलिकल्स शुड अंडर गो मेटाबॉलिज्म इन द लीवर बट इन द लीवर वॉट इज हैपनिंग जस्ट टू मॉलिकल्स आर अंडर गोइंग मेटाबॉलिज्म एंड एट मॉलिकल्स आर अवेलेबल फॉर for the systemic uh, distribution so this shows how non linear the pharmacokinetic is so next is drug distribution so in drug distribution at high dose non linearity occurs due to two prime factors the first factor is saturation of binding sites occurring on plasma proteins and second factor is tissue binding sites get saturated due to large single bolus doses or multiple dosing see drug plasma protein binding is saturable the saturation drug concentration for binding with plasma albumin is uh, approximately 600 micromol and for alpha 1 acid glycoprotein is approximately 50 micromol uh, as such suppose just imagine uh, you have consumed uh, okay with the help of table we'll check out in this table I have shown that amount of drug taken and amount of drug bound to the plasma protein and the amount of drug available in the plasma Suppose initially you have taken ten molecules of drug. Among those ten molecules, five molecules are bound to the plasma protein and five molecules in the plasma. Okay, so okay in a linear fashion. Next, when you are increasing the dose, now you are consuming twenty molecules of drug. Among those twenty molecules, ten molecules are bound to the plasma protein and ten molecules are available in the plasma. Again, you are increasing the dose. Thirty molecules you are consuming. Among those thirty molecules, fifteen molecules to the plasma protein, and fifteen mol fifteen molecules move to the plasma. Again, you are increasing the dose by forty molecules. Okay, when you are consuming forty molecules, twenty molecules are bound to the plasma protein, and twenty molecules are present in the plasma. So till here, you can see as you are increasing the dose, the plasma concentration is also increasing in a linear fashion. But after some times, when you are increasing the dose by fifty molecules, now the plasma protein are not available. All the plasma protein got saturated. So all the entire fifty molecules that you have consumed, entire fifty molecules are moving to the plasma. So here you can see, initially when you are increasing the dose by ten, the plasma concentration is increasing by five. When you are consuming twenty, the plasma concentration was ten. When the amount the dose was thirty, the plasma concentration was fifteen. When the amount input was forty, the plasma concentration was twenty. But when you are increasing beyond the level, when you are consuming fifty molecules of the drug, the entire fifty is presented on the plasma. So no doubt, with the dose, the plasma concentration is also increasing. But how much it is increasing? It is increasing in a li non-linear fashion. Okay. So here also you can see an example of non-linearity. next is drug metabolism okay so over here non linearity occurs due to capacity limited metabolism small changes in dose administration large variations in plasma concentration at steady state so the two major causes of non linearity in metabolism are first of all the capacity limited metabolism owing to enzyme and cofactor saturation this thing is quite similar to the plasma protein binding which we saw in previous case in the previous case when the plasma protein got saturated entire drug was present in the plasma similarly over here when all the enzymes will get saturated all the drugs will be available in the plasma in the intact form or you can say in non metabolized form second factor is enzyme induction decrease in plasma concentration occurs after repetitive administration over a period of time auto indication characterized in this case is also dose dependent therefore enzyme induction is common cause of both dose and time dependent kinetics now suppose for example you have consumed any uh, drug suppose 10 uh, no not 10 20 molecules of drug you have consumed and for the, those 20 molecules of drug in your body 10 enzymes are available so those 10 enzymes will act on the 10 molecules of the drug but how much you had consumed 20 molecules so among those 20 molecules 10 molecules will undergo metabolism by the enzyme and 10 molecules will be available for action 
in the target site okay so every time you are doing same thing repeatedly for about 6 months you are consuming some 20 molecules of those drug and for those 20 molecules 10 molecules of the enzymes are available in your body every day and every day those 10 molecules are metabolizing 10 molecules of those drug and among 20 molecules of drug 10 molecules are undergoing metabolism by the enzyme and the remaining 10 molecules are presented on the target site of action and this thing is continuous you are consuming 20 molecules of drug for last one month so what happens you know in your body some adaptation takes place what kind of adaptation means now your body know that okay my body is continuously taking some drugs and now this is the time that i should increase the number of the enzymes so automatically enzyme induction will takes place enzyme induction means it there will be increment in the synthesis of the enzymes okay now previously you had 10 enzymes now because of enzyme induction 15 enzymes are been available and now you are consuming 20 molecules of the drug and now 15 enzymes are working on those 20 molecules okay so five molecules are left and metabolize and that is moving to the target side of the action and five molecules are not sufficient enough for producing the action so you can see over here uh, an erratic fashion or non linearity can be observed over here because of the enzyme induction next is drug excretion so two active processes which are saturable in renal excretion of drug includes first of all active tubular secretion and secondly active tubular reabsorption now suppose this is your nephron i hope you can understand the bowman's capsule and the tubules the renal tubules as well now suppose this is a transporter protein okay so what is the main role of this transporter protein suppose some kind of drug p so this drug it is uh, this transporter protein will take this particular drug from the systemic circulation and dump it into the nephron and from here the drug will get excreted out from your body so as you are increasing the dose entire thing is getting transported by this transporter and it is getting excreted so this mechanism is known as active tubular secretion tubular secretion means the drug is been taken from the systemic circulation and it is moved into the nephron into the renal tubules and from the renal tubules the drug is getting excreted out from our body okay but suppose you are increasing the dose of the drug so what will happen you can see in this in this person the tray is very much small and it can occupy a limited amount of the drug so you can say the transporter will get saturated and it can eliminate only small amount of the drug out of your the body so this is known as saturation okay so uh, this is uh, taking place similarly tubular reabsorption tubular reabsorption means here the drugs from the renal tubule is reabsorbed back into the systemic circulation okay and the remaining drug which is present in the renal tubule it will be eliminated or excreted out from your body so from this what will happen suppose saturation of the transporter takes place so what will happen when saturation of the tubular secretion happens so what will happen in that case the renal clearance will be reduced similarly when the saturation for the transporter required for tubular reabsorption takes place then what happen at that time the renal excretion will be increasing okay so this is about the uh, drug excretion non linearity taking place because of drug excretion here the saturation of the transporter protein will next important thing is detection of non linearity see there are several tests to detect the non linearity in pharmacokinetic parameters but the simplest one are these two the first test is determination of steady state plasma concentration at different doses and the second test is determination of some important pharmacokinetic parameters such as bioavailability elimination half life or total systemic clearance at different doses of drugs next next we'll see about the michaelis menten method of estimating the parameters okay so it is also called as capacity limited metabolism or mixed order kinetics so we know when enzyme if it reacts with the substrate 
will get enzyme substrate complex and we have got a rate constant of k plus 1 and yes it is a reversible reaction and for reversible or the backward reaction the rate constant is k minus 1 anyways the enzyme substrate complex will then form the product enzyme plus the product and for this the rate constant is k plus 2 now when we plot a graph of time versus the concentration curve time obviously on the x axis and concentration on the y axis when we check out the concentration for enzyme plus substrate uh, like this curve will get so initially at the initial time the enzyme substrate complex the concentration of the enzyme and substrate complex will be highest but as the time goes on the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex will go on decreasing similarly when we want to check out the curve for the enzyme plus product concentration like this curve will get okay so initially the concentration of the product was very much less but as the time goes on as the reaction proceeds forwards further the concentration of the product will go on increasing now various different michaelis maintained uh, no uh, terms you should know for this we can uh, learn this thing with the help of a graph we'll plot a graph taking the concentration of the substrate that is c on the x axis and velocity of the reaction on the y axis velocity of the reaction can also be written as minus dc by dt minus because the concentration will go on reducing as the uh, rate of the reaction proceeds that's why we write it as as minus dc by dt so we'll have a curve somewhat like this okay so here uh, the important thing that you should know is the concentration the amount of enzyme is constant over here so initially as the concentration of the substrate increases the velocity of the reaction also increases because the enzymes are working on the substrate but after sometimes when the enzymes will get saturated with that further increase in the substrate concentration the velocity of the reaction does not increases okay so this line is for v max v max is the maximum velocity of the reaction attained with that particular that limited number of the enzyme okay when all the enzymes are engaged with the maximum limit of the concentration of the substrate at that time the velocity of the reaction is detected by v max and suppose at this particular point is the half of v max okay and when we extrapolate this thing over here we will get km km is the michaelis menten constant okay km is nothing but the concentration of the substrate and what concentration of the substrate it is that concentration of the substrate when the velocity of the reaction is half of the maximum See, half of the maximum velocity does not uh, nothing but it denotes that at this particular time the enzyme are getting activated okay it is the initial stage when the enzymes are getting activated so km is nothing but it is the concentration of the substrate and it is that concentration of the substrate which is required for activating the enzyme okay half of the vmax means it is the that velocity when all the enzymes are getting activated and Vmax, Vmax means here all the enzymes are uh, are active. Okay, all the enzymes are active and they are working on the maximum number of the substrate uh, according to their capability. Okay, so Km is nothing but it is the concentration of the substrate and it is that concentration of the substrate where the enzyme activity has initiated. Okay, now the Michaelis Menten equation goes like this: minus dc by dt is equals to Vmax into c divided by Km plus c. Okay, suppose this is equation number 1. So, here minus dc by dt is rate of decline of co drug concentration with time. Okay, this is rate. This is the velocity. Vmax is the theoretical maximum rate of the process and Km is the Michaelis constant. Or you can say Michaelis maintained constant. Km is also known as the uh, rate constant. Okay, anything. Next, three situation can now be considered depending upon the value of Km and C. Suppose in first situation when Km is equals to C. Okay, Km is the minimum amount of the concentration of the substrate required for causing activation of the enzyme. And when Km is equals to the substrate concentration, then what will happen? We can rearrange or we can uh, rewrite this Michaelis-Menten equation. 
okay here km is equals to c so minus dc by dt equals to v max into c divided by c plus c or you can say minus dc by dt equals to v max into c divided by 2c so c c gets cancelled off and we'll get minus dc by dt equals to v max by 2 or you can say minus dc by dt equals to half of v max okay so rate of the reaction is equals to half of the v max okay and it will happen obviously because km is equals to c km is that concentration of the substrate where the velocity is half of v max as we have proven in our uh, graph okay so this is the first situation when km is equals to concentration at that time the rate of uh, reaction is equals to half of the v max next situation is when km is very much uh, what to say uh, less um, very much more than that of the concentration of the drug okay means here the concentration of the drug is very less or you can say concentration of the drug is very much negligible so in that case we can write km plus c is equals to km so again we'll write the michaelis mendes equation and we'll try to plot everything in the similar manner here km plus c equals to km so minus dc by dt equals to v max into c divided by km okay so this equation says about the first order kinetics see what first order kinetics says as the concentration of the drug increases the rate of reaction also increases okay or you can say the rate of reaction or velocity of reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of the drug okay so whenever the concentration of the drug is very much less as in that time the um, uh, the drug will follows the first order kinetics okay at less concentration when the concentration increases the rate of the reaction also increases in a similar manner next uh, possibility is when km is very much less than the concentration or you can say when the concentration of the substrate is too much yes you can expect that thing but again we'll uh, restudy the thing um, km plus c equals to c okay here the concentration of the drug is too much that km is negligible so km plus c is equals to c and now we'll put the thing in the michaelis mentens equation so we'll get minus dc by dt equals to v max into c divided by c c c gets cancelled off and minus dc by dt equals to v max so what does it mean suppose this is equation number four so it means that when the concentration of the drug is too much at very high concentration of drug at that time the rate of the reaction is independent of the concentration of the drug you you just go on increasing the concentration of the drug but the rate of the reaction will be constant it will be going on in a normal manner because over here the concentration is too much as compared to the enzymes present all the enzymes will get saturated when the concentration of the, of the drug is too much next thing is we need to uh, estimate v max and km so uh, in enzyme kinetic work the classical michaelis mentens equation that is v equals to v max into c divided by km plus c so this is the equation so over here v is the reaction rate and c is the substrate concentration okay and with the help of this reaction rate and the substrate concentration we can get we can calculate the value of v max and the km okay v max is the maximum velocity and km is the michaelis mentens constant so we have got various methods by which we can determine it and we'll check out three of these methods by which we can calculate v max and km with the help of the uh, reaction rate and the substrate concentration so method one by reciprocating the equation that is michaelis mentens equation will get 1 by v equals to km divided by v max into 1 by c plus 1 by v max suppose this is equation number two now when we plot a graph taking 1 by v uh, against 1 by c see if you see this equation carefully it is similar to y equals to mx plus c isn't it so similarly we'll plot a graph taking 1 by c on x axis and 1 by v in y axis okay y equals to mx plus c and we'll get a straight line okay and for this straight line the slope is equals to km divided by v max obviously and this is the intercept that is 1 by v max is the intercept over here and minus 1 by km is the x axis intercept next for uh, next for example if 
uh, will uh, will solve a problem over here a plot of 1 by v versus 1 by c gave an intercept of 0.33 micromole and a slope of 1.65 so now just calculate the value of v max and k so we have a few um, uh, few uh, known parameters over here and we need to calculate v max and km so let us calculate it now we have intercept the intercept is given that is 0.33 uh, micromole so intercept our intercept is 1 by v max okay so if we do it 1 by 0.33 will get the value of v max that is 3 micromole per minute okay now slope the value of slope is also given that is 1.65 and our slope is km by v max and km by v max equals to 1.65 we have the value of v max that is 3 so km is equals to 1.65 into 3 and we'll get 4.95 micromole per ml so in this manner you can see how we'll get the value of v max and km so from known factor we are calculating the unknown factor that is v max and km so this is first method next method number two this same equation will multiply it by c and we will get c by v is equal to km by v max plus c by v max suppose this is equation number three now again we'll plot a graph taking c on the x-axis and c by v on the y-axis will get a straight line and for this straight line the intercept will be km by v max and the slope is equal to 1 by v max okay and with this method by we can calculate the amount of v max and km next method number three the equation can also be written in this manner that is v equals to minus km into v by c plus v max okay we are rearranging the michaelis menten equation as such suppose this is equation number flow for similar manner again we'll plot a graph taking v by c on x axis and v on the y axis we'll get a straight line the intercept is v max and slope is equals to minus km okay so these are the three method by which with the help of the dose and with the help of the velocity we'll get the value of v max and the km next calculation of km and v max by steady state concentration see if a drug is administered for constant rate by intravenous infusion or in a multiple dosage regime the steady state concentration is given in term of the dosing rate abbreviated as dr so dr equals to css into clt css is the steady state concentration clt is the total clearance suppose this is equation number one now if the steady state is reached then dosing rate is equal to the rate of decline in the plasma concentration obviously the rate of input is equal to rate of output at steady state but if decline occurs due to a single capacity limited process then equation one will become dr is equal to v max into css divided by km plus css from a pl plot of css versus dr okay will plot a graph will taking dr on the x axis and css on the y axis a typical curve having a shape of hockey stick is obtained okay and here this one will be the v max yes dr on the dr side will get the v max and this is the half of v max and we'll extrapolate this thing and we'll get the value of km okay so this is how we can calculate this thing next methods used to determine the km and v max at steady state so basically we have got three methods okay there are three methods which are used to define the km and v max at a steady state with appreciable accuracy and these three methods are first of all line weaving work plot method second one is the direct linear plot method and third one is the graphical method and we'll check out these things one by one so first of all coming to the line weaver work plot method so this equation which we have seen previously we are reciprocating this equation and we'll get something like this 1 by dr is equals to km divided by v max into css plus 1 by v max now we'll plot a graph okay 
so 1 by cs is on the x axis and 1 by dr on the y axis will get a curve like this and the intercept is 1 by v max and slope is equals to km by v max okay so this is the line weaver blurk plot method by which we can determine the level or determine the amount of km and v max next method is the direct linear plot method so what we are doing over here is we are plotting a pair we are plotting a pair of the a css okay like we are taking css1 and css2 against the corresponding dosing rate of dr1 and dr2 okay so on the x axis we have got dr on the y axis on the right side we'll get km on the left side it is for css okay so we are taking two steady state concentration steady state concentration 1 and for this appropriate dr1 we are getting this is steady state concentration 2 and for this dr2 we are getting and next we are extrapolating over here we are getting v max and over here we are getting the value of km okay so this is how we will get the value of v max and km with the help of direct linear plot method lastly there is the graphical method so in graphical method same this equation we are rearranging and we'll get an equation somewhat like this so dr equals to v max minus km into dr divided by css so this is equation number 4 now we are plotting our graph taking dr by cs on the x axis and dr on the y axis a straight line will get an intercept we will get a value of v max and slope is equals to minus km now km and v max can be estimated by simultaneous equations such as min uh, sorry dr1 equals to v max minus km into dr1 divided by css1 suppose this is equation number 5 similarly dr2 equals to v max in uh, minus km into dr2 divided by css2 and this is equation number 6 now on solving equation 5 and equation 6 we will get km is equals to dr1 minus dr2 divided by dr1 divided by css1 minus dr2 by css2 so this is equation number 7 so by substituting the values of dr1 dr2 css1 and css2 we get the values of km and from km we can found the value of v max at steady state concentration from experimental observations it shows that km is much less variable than v max okay so this is all about the non linear pharmacokinetics i hope you people understood this video thank you for watching